managed to do all of what it has done. It has a very, very impressive track record. 124 spacecraft missions have been undertaken by the ISRO so far. 91 launch missions uh, that have been undertaken by ISRO, which is again a record. Uh, the payloads that have been put into orbit, uh, it is the sixth largest in the world for any space agency. Uh, in terms of the objects that are in outer space, over 130 of them. The satellites that have been launched at one shot, and remember ISRO just did this recently where it launched satellites of multiple countries, 104 is the record that ISRO holds for launching satellites at one go. Uh, the next one, of course, is going to be the big one, which is the first manned mission by India. It's called the Gaganyaan, and that, of course, is something that India will be hoping to do in 2024. So let me go back to our uh, guest and, and, and Leroy, just to you know, take this forward, uh, what is it that uh, you would be looking for? Uh, I mean, are, are we close to a position where we can say that, okay, uh, there is the presence of water, large quantities of water uh, on, on the lunar surface, and are we in a position to even think about possible habitation there? Yes, water is a big enabler, and what it does is that if you can have water on the moon that's readily available or not difficult to access, you can bring it to the surface, you can electrolyze it and separate it into oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, you can uh, use those for, of course, breathing, the oxygen. Uh, you can also use them as components to make propellant for your vehicles that you're going to go ahead and launch off of the moon perhaps back to Earth. So that's the big enabler and it's very exciting. ISRO has made great strides over the last several years, uh, you know, coming up with very sophisticated launch vehicles, as you pointed out, uh, becoming one of the leaders in launching satellites. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of years, year or so, we'll see ISRO put the first Indian astronauts into space. Uh, and that is something that very few countries can do. Uh, Dara Patel, just to sort of Take this forward in terms of, you know, what could be the next sort of frontiers to be conquered, as it were. Uh, you have now the, the moon mission, which is successful. Of course, all the data will be analyzed. And of course, the scientific studies uh, will open new chapters. But, you know, sending a manned uh, crew to outer space, that's one. You have the mission to the sun. It won't get uh, too far close to the sun, but uh, the exploration of the sun uh, from the not so warm side that is there as well. That is Mission Aditya. I think that's 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 going to be uh, playing out over the next couple of years. And then there is also uh, the mission to Mars. How do you see these various missions playing out? And just a word also on the fact that uh, whether it is ingenuity or whether it is just you know traditional Indian nature to do things cheaply. The fact that this mission is substantially cheaper than other missions that we've seen undertaken by the US or China or the former Soviet Union. Yeah, there's a lot there. So I think first and foremost, you know, thinking about the, um, the future of space exploration, I think this new space race, this new kind of drive and push to get to the moon, it, it's not necessarily the end goal for everyone. Part of this um, big drive to get to the moon is to be able to have an outpost that allows us to get to other places in our solar system like Mars. And, you know, I think that is the big hope for several different nations and organizations is to eventually take humans to Mars. And if we can, you know, make sure that we have successful missions to the moon and we can get crew to and from the moon safely living and working on the moon for longer periods of time, that paves the way for us taking humans to Mars. But also all these other missions that you've talked about, you know, the Indian um, Mars mission is giving us more understanding along with other missions that are at Mars about the Martian surface and how humans might cope there. An understanding of our sun is incredibly important. Our sun, you know, it drives the solar system. It drives space weather. We feel the effects of the sun here and around Earth, and it will be the same for places like the moon and for Mars as well. So it's an incredibly important uh, kind of body in our solar system to study. And I think on the, the kind of notes you mentioned about the, the cost of space, it's one of the big things that we are trying to bring down in the industry. Space is a very expensive industry and the more sustainably and the cheaper we can do things, uh, I guess the more advancement and developments we can make as well. Uh, Chris Hadfield, 
you know, one of the things that Dara just referred to was it has always been a big dream to be able to go to the moon and use that as some kind of a launch pad to explore the rest of the uh, rest of outer space, to explore the rest of the solar system, as it were. How far out do you think that is? I mean, we have an international space station, but to have, let's say, a, a permanent station on the moon, is that an impossibility? Oh, no, of course not. In fact, it, it's a program that India is a part of. Uh, India is a partner in the Artemis program and an extremely accomplished partner now that they have landed Chandrayaan-3 on the surface of the moon. And, and the purpose of that international uh, Artemis program is to send people to the moon, first to orbit it, and then eventually to land on the surface and to start building a human settlement where you have both sun and water at the south pole of the moon. That's what we're doing. That is the plan and, and the, uh, the joint reason that we're working on this together. There is a, a, a mission with crew on board going to the moon late next year or early uh, 2025. Uh, international crew of Americans and Canadians going to the moon in 2024 or five. And so it, it's pretty easy to extrapolate out that since India is a partner in that and is about to fly their own astronauts in space, that there will be Indian citizens going to the moon and walking on the surface of the moon. It, it, it's a natural progression from what we've done so far. And, and I think that is immensely inspiring to, to young Indian people as to some of the options that are available to them when they're choosing what to do with their lives. All right, I'll give Jonathan Levy the final word. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, the, the term space race was, well, of course, had negative connotations, the space race between America and the USSR. But do you see a positive space race now being uh, uh, sort of ignited, if you will? China has had multiple successful space missions just in the last decade, decade and a half or so. India has had, again, multiple successful space missions in the last 10 years or so. Do you see more and more newer countries being excited and ignited for uh, space exploration and space programs uh, as India and China have done uh, in the last uh, 10 to 15 years or so? Absolutely. I mean, competition is a great thing where it accelerates progress. But that will happen both at an individual level and at a partnership level. Uh, and I think what you're seeing now is that India has demonstrated its ability uh, to, to, to have an independent program, but also increases, therefore, its role within the international community and the partnership projects going forward. And I think the reason people are getting stimulated by space isn't only looking at steps beyond the Earth, but also looking at the critical infrastructure supported from space for the Earth. And it's becoming strategically important to have a capability in space, not only to monitor weather and, and those sorts of things with climate change, which India is affected by, but also communications and transactions and all the things that, that, that are important for national security. So it's a multi-level uh, scenario now and one in which all nations need to have a role in one way or another. All right, Jonathan Levy, Leroy Chow, Dara Patel, and of course, uh, Chris Hatfield. Thank you very much for joining us on what is an incredible moment, not just for India, not just for ISRO, that it indeed is for a billion plus Indians, but this is a big moment for space enthusiasts around the world. This is going to ignite and propel an entire new generation of kids to take up space exploration, much like the Apollo uh, series did, much like uh, what we saw when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and the first moon mission uh, ended in success. And with those great words, one small step for man and a giant leap for mankind. Today was indeed a giant leap for India, for ISRO and Indian space enthusiasts everywhere around the world. We leave you with some prominent voices on what this moment means for us, for space programs and of course for pride at being part of this great nation. Thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you again tomorrow night, same time. Good night. It is with immense pride as a citizen of our great nation that I witnessed the remarkable landing of Chandrayaan-3 on the moon today. 
Uh, the success of the lunar mission places India in a select group of nations to have successfully achieved a landing on the lunar surface. It is all the more significant because India is the only nation to have achieved a lunar landing on the south pole of the moon. This will herald new avenues in scientific research and discovery. Truly, this lunar landing represents a milestone in the onward march of our nation. My heartiest congratulations to Team ISRO and the entire scientific community on this historic achievement. They have truly made the nation proud. There are days when history is made. Today, with the successful moon landing of the Chandrayaan-3 mission, our scientists have not only made history, but also remade the idea of geography. It is truly a momentous occasion, a kind of event that happens once in a lifetime, making all Indians proud. I congratulate ISRO and everybody involved in this mission and wish them greater accomplishments ahead. The success of Chandrayaan, I believe, is also a major achievement for the whole of humankind. It shows how India has harnessed its rich traditional knowledge based along with modern science in the service of humanity. आज हम सब के लिए गौरव का दिन है आज चंद्रयान तीन तय किए हुए समय पर तय किए हुए जगह पर सफलता के साथ चंद्रमा की सतह पर उतरा है मैं इस मौके पर सबसे पहले तो देश के सभी 140 करोड़ लोगों को बहुत बहुत मन से बधाई देना चाहता हूं कि आजादी के अमृत काल में हमारे देश को अंतरिक्ष के क्षेत्र में एक बहुत बड़ी सफलता मिली है जो हम सब के लिए गौरव का विषय है इसके साथ अथर मेहनत और बहुत बारीकी से प्लानिंग कर कर चंद्रयान को सफल करने वाली टीम चंद्रयान के सभी वैज्ञानिकों और सभी इंजीनियरों को भी मैं हृदय से बहुत बहुत बधाई देना चाहता हूँ